this is a question I've been crafting all day for you. As a guy that kind of watches from the outside looking in, and your situation with Ring of Honor going on hiatus, not knowing what you're going to do next, and then all of a sudden it feels like you've kind of broken out of this protective shell that you were in when you were with Ring of Honor, and you started kind of venturing out and doing other things. In retrospect now, do you kind of feel like, at least for you, this hiatus has been great for you because now you feel like I, I'm seeing you do other things and branching out and and I need I say growing a little bit? Yeah, there, there's a little bit of validation, you know, to put it in, in kind of a music analogy. One of my one of my favorites is Nick Lowe, and he was with a group, Brinsley Schwartz, and they got a big record deal right out of the gate. And it wasn't until they got out of that big record deal and that he started working with Stiff Records and he started, you know, just venturing out and, and really seeing the world a little bit that he was able to go back and validate some of his earlier, you know, his earlier songs and records and things like that. For me, there's, there was kind of this disappointment, you know, I'm 35. So for about half of my adult life, I've, I've been with Ring of Honor. So as a lifelong pro wrestling fan, as you know, I was, uh, geez, I was 15 years old when, when Ring of Honor started, I followed them from the beginning and, and it was really the only place I wanted to be. It started in Philadelphia. I'm from up the road in Allentown and it was kind of the home promotion. So to be able to land in my dream spot and, and kind of take the reins from a guy that I grew up watching, Kevin Kelly, and following his footsteps was something really special. So when I got the news, I thought maybe I, I had sort of a, I don't want to say stench, but maybe I was branded. Maybe I'd be the Ring of Honor guy forever, for better or worse. But I was pleasantly surprised. You know, the first person to reach out was actually Kevin Kelly, who said, hey, I'm going to be in Japan. Would you like to do these New Japan USA shows? I said, sure. Scott Demore reached out. He said, we're going to have Jonathan Gresham in, in Impact. Would you like to call those matches? I said, sure. And Brett over at GCW, same thing. And it's been one of these cool things where I, I had been kind of in a shell. I had been kind of protected for better, for worse. But, you know, I, I've gotten to meet a, a whole new group of people. I think I accidentally joined the gang. I think I joined Nick Gage's gang by accident a couple of weeks ago at the GCW show. So it's been neat. It's been very cool. And, you know, it, it's led to Tony Khan buying Ring of Honor. And now I kind of want that, that branding, that stench of being the, the Ring of Honor guy. Because I, I see a lot of growth opportunity. And I see it was never for effort or talent that Ring of Honor didn't get bigger. I think, <clears throat> excuse me, I think Tony, <clears throat> wow, there we go. Choked up. Yeah, I, I think Tony <laughs> Khan has the resources. I think he has the love for Ring of Honor and, and the appreciation for the history to really see it through and to grow it, at least, you know, appreciate the, the back catalog and whatnot, and hopefully with a future vision as well.